This is a cylindrical solid I created with the Rhino cylinder command. It's a poly surface and I'm going to mesh the surface using Rhino's mesher. Click on this poly surface and just type mesh and I can use either the detailed controls or the simple controls. In this case I'll use the simple controls and I'll drag the slider all the way to the right and say OK and it gives me a mesh. I'll hide my poly surface. I don't need it right now and you can see that the Rhino mesh is a bunch of elongated, very thin triangles, which are okay for machining and probably rapid prototyping, but they're not very suitable for numerical computations. I could have created a better mesh with the Rhino built-in capabilities, but it doesn't always give you everything that you need. It's, it's difficult to get very precise size control. So in this case, I'm gonna remesh it with the griddle surface remesher. I can select my mesh, click on the griddle surface remesher. In this case, let's select a quad dominant mesh. Let's put a minimum edge length of two, max edge length of two, and we'll leave everything else as a default. And we get this mesh. And you can see it's a nice quad dominant mesh. I could generate a volume mesh by selecting the, this mesh and clicking on the griddle volume mesher. And I would, in this case, I would say I want a hex dominant mesh and I'd select an output format. And the, the mesh that's generated would have volume elements with these faces on them. I can undo and redo if I wish. I can just do a control Z and I'll get back my original mesh and I can do a redo as well. The settings I had in my griddle surface measure were global settings for the min and max edge length. I can override these global settings with some local settings. And I can do this by extracting portions of the mesh and specifying a required mesh size for that portion of the mesh. So I can use the Rhino extract connected mesh faces and extract, say for example, the end of this cap of this cylinder. And I can give that cylinder, or I can give that cylindrical end a property name corresponding to a mesh size. The other edge sizes are two meters. I can set this to say, let's say 0.25 meters in the name field. Now when I select all the meshes, they have to be conformal. I can do a control A, select all the meshes, and go back into the surface remesher. I still have my min and max edge length at two meters, but the end face will override this. And I'll say delete input, yes, and let's see what it gives me. So now it gives me much finer gradation on the end. Say I wanted to have a finer mesh on this end cap, but I wanted to keep this coarse mesh intact. So I want to keep these, elong these long edges here intact. I want to have a fine mesh in the middle here. I can extract those at that end cap, and then I can either trace over these edges that I want to preserve, the hard edges, with the polyline command, snap each polyline segment to these vertices, or I can just say dupe border and Rhino will duplicate that border. Once again, I can set the properties of this end mesh with the size I want. So I'll say 0.25 meters for the edge size. The polyline here, I'll select it and turn the points on. And you can see there's a point at each vertex. Turn these points off. Now, if I select this polyline, curve, and the end mesh, I don't select the other mesh, I can remesh with the griddle surface remesher. I can use the same parameters I had before, and the local override for the size will take effect. So once again, it's remeshed, I can turn my curve off, and we can see here, we have a very 
elongated edge here and it matches perfectly with the other mesh. I can use this to make a volume mesh. The meshes that I'm creating here need to be conformal, but nothing prohibiting me from making this mesh a quad mesh and this one a triangle mesh. So I can just select this mesh and the edges that I've outlined, go to the griddle surface remesher and say, instead of saying quad dominant, I'll say triangle mesh and remesh. So now I end up with a triangle mesh on the end that totally conforms to my hex mesh. When I make a volume mesh, griddle volume mesh will probably insert prisms and tets near the end and more hexahedra toward the middle of the cylinder. We can specify mesh sizes at discrete points in the mesh. We can do this by creating points using the rhino point command at locations in your mesh. So I can snap to a vertex here and give that point a size in its name field. So for example here, let's give this a size of 0.25 meters. Now when I select everything, the points and the mesh, and remesh with the griddle, those local overrides take effect. And we end up with a finer mesh where we specified it.